Chapter 3 A Sad Story The next day, part of the herd of zebras were led into the big barn. It had rows of stalls. Hoofy was to be checked by a vet and cleaned up by one of the farmhands. While Hoofy was waiting his turn, he heard a familiar snort from across the aisle. It was Lady McZebra. She hadn't noticed Hoofy yet. She was contentedly eating some oats. Hoofy threw a friendly snort in her direction. She looked up, and then her ears pressed down into their annoyed position. She let out a disgusted raspberry breath. (laughs) Oh, it's you again. How lucky. Come on, Lady McZebra. Aren't you ever going to be nice to me again? Hoofy asked. I don't know. What happened to Zigzag, my brother? That's all I want to know. I'm afraid it was a very sad day. We had been grazing and were galloping through a field. We heard a snap. Zigzag got caught in a snare. A snare? They aren't even legal, Lady McZebra said. And then you just went off and left him, huh? No way, Hoofy said. It was the kind of snare that the more you tried to get out of it, the tighter the wire cut into you. Zigzag got crazy. He tried so hard to free himself that he cut off his own air supply. He couldn't breathe. Both Flasher and I tried to bite at the cable to loosen it or something, but Zigzag was in a panic. He kept thrashing his head about until he finally drew his last breath and fell to the ground. We listened for a heartbeat, but Zigzag got cold and stiff We knew he was dead. We rear-kicked trees and stomped the ground until way after sunset. Then Flasher and I fell asleep right next to him. We were exhausted from grief and sadness. Zigzag was one of my best friends. I loved your brother, Lady McZebra, very much. Flies started to come in the morning. We covered him with some leaves and branches. We said a prayer to the heavens. Flasher said, Hoofy, it's time to go. He was right. What a horrible trap. I hope they prosecute the person that put it there, Lady McZebra said. Now leave me alone.